So again welcome back students. So we have now completed the first four modules. So in the this module or uh, this particular module we will take up other partition functions now or corresponding to the other ensembles. In the previous lectures what we saw was ensembles mainly on the canonical ensemble that is number of molecules then the constraint volume and temperature. But this particular lecture and the starting from this module we will see the effect of different ensembles. The ensembles what we will see here in this particular lecture is the grand canonical ensemble and micro canonical ensemble. So, we will go one by one. So, we will start with the micro canonical ensemble. So, micro ensemble for a pure fluid we will be going through it is much more easier. Micro canonical ensemble represents to those uh, systems which are having constant number of molecules, volume and the energy. And the uh, grand canonical is something which is equal to the chemical potential, the volume and temperature. So, these are the two very important uh, ensembles we will be seeing and we will also exploring the other important ensemble that is isothermal isobaric ensemble, NPT ensembles because that is very important considering chemical engineers because those are properties obtained at constant pressure and temperature. But let us start with the microcanonical ensemble that is NVE. So, the other assembles let me just quickly glance through these particular uh, critical points that is the type of system where it is closed, isolated, constant volume. So, NVE means where it is a closed system, it is an isolated system and the constant volume systems and it is characterized by a fixed volume and energy content. Okay. So, the microcanonical partition function corresponding to microcanonical ensemble is a term used to describe the partition function that characterized a system of this nature. So, wherever you have a system which is having N, V and E, we are called as microcanonical ensemble. The second system which we will study or we will explore is an open system. Now, earlier it was a closed system that is both the systems are not free to exchange matter with the surrounding, but here it is open system, it is able to freely exchange matter. So, it means that we have a fixed volume, but situated with an infinite bath. Infinite bath means you have a temperature thermal reservoir, infinite temperature thermal reservoir and the thermal reservoir temperature is given by capital T and a chemical potential. Chemical potential means the number of molecules. The number of molecules in each of the particular systems can be changed or they can be interchanged or transferred across the systems. These are represented as mu. So, the system may consist of more than one species, one or more species. So, the grand canonical partition function is associated with the grand canonical ensemble. Okay? So, let us go with the first that is the micro canonical ensemble. So, in the microcanonical ensemble, it is observed that all microstates possess an equal probability of occurrence. Okay? So, now suppose you have uh, NVE, systems of NVE. So, NVE or I can write down NVJ. So, you may have uh, E1, E2, E3, E4. So, what it says that all these systems which has total energy as E1 or E2 or E3 or E4, they are actually equally probable. So, it means the state of the system is then de defined by the degeneracy, the degeneracy of the state of NVE, this is basically a number degeneracy. So, these many states, microstates will have NVE to be equal. So, any of these states can occur. Okay. So, it can reduce that the probability of the occurrence of any microstates with a constant NVE, thus I can write down if there are number of states, let us say there are 10 number of such states. So, occurrence of any of the state is 1 by 10. The probability is 1 upon 10. If there are 5 associated states that the degeneracy is 5, so any of the state of probability is 1 by 5 likewise. So, if I want to write down in terms of uh, this numericals, it will be the probability of the occurrence of a state which is having an energy E is nothing but the reciprocal of the degeneracy. Okay? So, this is a probability. So, so, it means that if I want to have a summation 
across all such type of systems which has energy of E. So, if I write here all microstates corresponding to the total energy as E, then uh, you will be having summation of 1 upon sigma, sorry this. So, it will be equal to what? It will be 1 because the sum total of all the probabilities is equal to 1 means you will somewhere find the energy of state E. So, sum total is equal to 1. Now, this is different from the canonical expression what we described earlier. In that case, we took the derivative of energy with respect to number of molecules. But here, all those subsystems are totally isolated. It means all those derivatives is equal to 0. Okay, the derivatives of those energy of subsystem A, subsystem B with respect to number of molecules because all the molecules are number of same. So, you do a derivative it will be 0 only. So, what you only have is the combining factor is the degeneracy. What is the degeneracy of this particular this microstates? How many microstates it has associated with this particular energy E? So, with this we are now in a position to define the thermodynamic properties. For entropy we will have so, for the first property that is entropy, you will have entropy S equal to minus k minus k into all the states j, all the j states into probability of occurrence of a particular energy state E j into ln of probability of occurrence of a particular energy of state E j. This I have derived already. This is how to counter or how to calculate the entropy of a system. So, you multiply the probability into its natural probability values and do the summation across all the states you get the entropy. So, now, but for a micro canonical ensemble for micro canonical ensemble we have now, replace this probability with this degeneracies, you will get S equal to minus K summation of all the states J, then you will have the degeneracy corresponding to N, V and E J into ln of 1 upon the degeneracy N, V and E J. Okay? So, it means I have just replaced the probability with the degeneracies expression. Now, I do a summation. So, before I do a summation, I try to cancel out this minus sign. If I take this denominator to the numerator, the negative signs goes away. So, what you have is then you apply, then you apply a summation across on this term, summation on this term. If you do a summation on this term, it means you are having these many times. So, it means if I write in terms of k, this will be nothing but these many times you will be summing by this n v e j okay? and this will be as it is n v n v e j. Okay? So, it means summation is on this particular so, it means that these many times if I this is repeated, so these many times you will be adding. So, how many times you will be adding? You will be just adding with the number of degeneracy. So, it means that this entire expression will be multiplied by a common factor which is a degeneracy. So, I multiply this common factor with degeneracy. The negative signs cancels out because the denominator goes into numerator. So, it means that what we are getting is here simply cancel out these two. It is simply K L N of this n v e j. So, having an expression for entropy is very simple, you multiply by the Boltzmann constant with the logarithmic value of the degeneracy, you get the entropy term. Okay? For other thermodynamic properties, we can use the expression that is d s, this th through classical thermodynamics, we know this expression you express entropy in terms of internal energy, volume and number of molecules. So, it will be V by N into du plus dou S upon dou V by u comma N into dou V dV plus dou S upon dou N keeping both u and V to be constant. This is an expression which comes out 
due to classical thermodynamics. Now what you do is you just substitute all this value you know what are these so it will be 1 upon t into du plus dou s by dou v is nothing by p by t into dv and what is this dou s by dou n dou s by dou n is nothing but minus g by n into dn g by t sorry this is g by t into dn so this is the expression or I can uh, simplify it right and write this like this du by t then plus p by t into dv this g I can write down as mu okay so it is mu by t into dn so this is the expression okay now it means that I can relate these terms with different expression so 1 by t is equal to dou s by dou u v by n so I know what is the entropy term entropy term I have just now described so I feel it will be nothing but k into dou of ln of n u v by dou u into v by n so n u v means I am trying to find out what is the degeneracy so if you know the degeneracy an expression which relates n number of molecules u is the energy internal energy and volume you do a derivative partial derivative with respect to the internal energy you will get the temperature likewise you can also get the pressure what is this p by t p by t is nothing but dou s by dou v keeping the internal energy and number of molecules to be constant again the same thing you will get you take the derivative dou ln derivative of n u v by dou v keeping both internal energy and number of molecules to be constant and what is g by t g by t is same as mu by t so maxwell relations i am applying minus dou s by dou n of u by v so i will have is minus k into dou ln same degeneracy expression n v and u by dou n so these expressions 1 by t p by t g by t thus gives us the remaining thermodynamic properties for microcanonical ensemble now let us go to the grand canonical ensemble so the microcanonical ensemble is pretty easy because you do not have to work with derivatives with respect to the either energy or the number of molecules but in the case of the grand canonical where the number of molecules is not constant because they are free to exchange they are free to exchange both energy and matter with the surroundings so there we will having a similar approach what we did for canonical ensemble so what are the basic assumption the grand canonical ensemble the basic assumption lies into the fact that all microstates with the same energy e and the same number of particles n are assumed to be equally probable similar to what we have for microcanonical the probability of a particular microstate is now represented by p probability of locating a system through the energy E and number of molecules N. Now if you consider this particular uh, reservoir this is the thermal reservoir which is an infinite source of both temperature and mu, mu means number of particles so because of this T and mu it can easily exchange it can easily exchange the number of molecules across the subsystem A and subsystem B. So the composite system A and B is made of the macroscopic systems A and B. So this composite system is made up of A plus B. Systems are free to exchange both energy and particles with one another and also with a common thermal and particle reservoir. Okay? So as it comes depicted, it can both exchange energy as well as number of molecules, energy as well as number of molecules with a thermal reservoir. The temperature will give you the energy and mu will give you the number of particles a number of uh, molecules so it means the probability of the composite system being in a state with the energy e a plus b and n particles will be denoted as this so what is the probability that i get a composite system with the energy e a plus e b is nothing but e a plus e b e a plus b is nothing but e a plus e b okay 
n particles will be nothing but v probability of locating a composite system with energy a plus b and total number of molecules as n. So, the aggregate quantity of particles is represented by the sum of n a and n b. So, likewise I can also represent this as n a plus n b okay? denoting the corresponding quantities of particles in systems a and b. So, thus we can say that a and b represent a macroscopic system if A and B represent macroscopic system, it follows that the total energy of the combined system denoted as Eab can be expressed as the sum of the individual energies Ea and Eb. Okay. So, it means the total sum thus becomes Ea plus Eb and total molecules becomes Na plus Nb. So, we are now trying to find out what is the probability of locating a composite system with energy Ea plus B having number of molecules as N A plus N B. So, we will find out mathematically using exactly a similar analogy what we did for canonical ensemble. So, it means that if I want to find out the probability of an event E A B, so N here is equal to the probability of the event E A plus B and N A plus N B. So, content that the energy of the two systems are mutually independent. So, the mutual independent means this two n number of m since it can exchange energy as well as number of molecules with the surrounding. So, its energy can also be mutually independent of each other. So, quantity of particles present in one system remains unaffected by the quantity of particles in the other system. Since both the system possess the ability to freely interchange particles within the particle reservoir. It means whatever system we have in this particular subsystem A and subsystem B, both of them are allowed to exchange matter as well as number of particles with the infinite source given by T and mu. So, whatever fluctuation you have in system A and system A are independent of each other. So, fluctuations of system A or B will not affect the systems on either the other A or B. So, it can we can write down the microstate E A is not influenced by microstate E B. That is what it says both the systems are individual in their existence. So, if they are individual in the expansion, so I can write down the overall expression for the probability as a product of obtaining a microstate E A N A multiplied by the product of obtaining a microsystem E B N B. So, with a similar ensemble for N V T ensemble I can write down this as P A B. So, I can write down P of A plus B into E A plus E B into N A plus N B number of molecules. So, what it says is it is nothing but the product of number of molecules the A system into in product of number of molecules in the B system. Okay. So, this is what it says the product. Now, we do a derivative term. First, we will do a derivative with respect to E A, then we will do a respective with respect to E B. Then again we do the same approach for number of molecules N A and N B. Let us see what we get. So, do of P A plus B upon do E A it is nothing but do P A B A plus B divided by do of E B into do of E A plus E B into do E A. Okay. This is equal to O of P A plus B do of E A plus E B. So, it is nothing but this I did earlier for canonical ensemble is exactly the same expression we obtain do E A into P B. Okay. So, then you again write a similar expression when you do for E B. 
So, you get the probability dou of E A plus E B then is equal to into dou of E A plus E B. Now, instead of E A, it will be E B now. Okay. It will be nothing but dou of probability of A plus B combined by dou of E A plus E B. equal to do P B by do E B into P A. Okay. So, it means that if I take these expressions of 1 and 2, I can equate equation 1 and 2. So, if I want to equate 1 and 2, we get P B. So, B is a function of E B and N B. So, E B and B although I have not mentioned it P B here, but it is a function of subsystem B into dou P A. Likewise, this is also a function of E A and N A. You do this with respect to E A is equal to P A function of E A and N A into dou of P B E B to N B dou of E B. Okay. Or what I can do? I can take convert into log terms. If I take B A this side, P A this side and P B this side, what you will get is dou ln of P A by dou E A equal to dou ln of P B by dou E B. Okay. Now, this is an important conclusion. So, this one is an important conclusion with respect to derivatives of energy. Likewise, you can do a similar approach and find out that dou P A by dou N A is equal to dou L N P B by dou N B. This is another expression. Okay. So, one of the derivative with respect to E A, another with respect to N A. So, likewise, now what I will do? I will try to find out the expression of P A from the first expression. Let us say equation A and this is equation B. Then let us see what happens. So, from equation A, from equation A, from the previous slide equation A, I write this expression dou ln P A by dou of Pa. Now, we have seen that this is equal to another derivative term dou ln P B by N E B. There is nothing but some form, it is a constant and what this constant is, there is nothing but it will be minus beta that we have seen. It will be since it is energy term, it is a function of beta. Beta is nothing but you know 1 upon k t. So, this is one expression. So, we can get this. So, so, if I want to write out in terms of uh, total derivatives, you will get ln of P A, ln of P A is equal to minus beta E A plus C A. This C A will be a function of N A. Okay? This C A will be a function of N A. So, beta is a constant here and C A and N A is an unknown function. So, you can write down C A N A is a unknown function, unknown function of only N A, okay? only N A. So, I will get here P A which is obviously a function of E A N A. This will be nothing but e to the power of, now I just subtract of variables, e to the power of minus beta into E A plus e to the power of C A into N A. Okay. From equation B, so this is one expression, from equation B, so we know that dou ln of P A by dou of N A equal to dou ln P B by dou of N B. 
which is nothing but it should be something with respect to number of molecules. So, this I am writing as minus equal to a constant is equal to minus beta into mu. Now, I am introducing this factor mu here. First time I am introducing the factor mu minus beta into mu. So, if I substitute this value, so if I substitute this equation 3 in equation 4, put 3 in 4, put equation number 3. So, if I put here ln of P a, just put here ln of P a instead of P a, I write this expression in the left hand side. What will you get? You will get simply you will have dou C a n a by dou n a equals to minus beta u mu. Because if you take the ln of P a that is this term, ln means it operates on this because this I will have to do with respect to n a, the derivative with respect to n a. When I do a ln it will minus beta e a which is a constant. When it is given a derivative with respect to n a it is 0. So, you are left with only this term e of C a into n a that is C a n a when you take a logarithmic. So, it becomes dou of C a n a by dou n a is equal to minus beta mu. So, I can then write down this expression as C a what so now I have an expression for C a. So, beta mu n a plus d. Now, here to make d is now it will be independent of n and e. Here d is independent of n and e. So, this is the expression we have got. Okay. So, now let us see. So, uh, let us try to deduce we are nearing to the partition function derivation. Let us see after that. So, so what we got I just want to repeat it again and again here the expression ln of P a is equal to minus beta E a plus C a n a. We have got this already plus C a n a okay? and we have also got this expression C a n a equals to beta mu n a plus d. These two expressions we have already got. So, we have an expression of C a here. So, this C a is nothing but beta mu n a plus d. So, it means this probability I can write down in this manner E a n a. So, what I will do I will uh, express this probability in terms of exponential terms. So, I put exponential term on the right hand side. So, you will get e to the power of d into e to the power of minus beta e a plus beta mu n a. Okay? So, this expression is nothing but this expression. So, if I just substitute the C a n a value here and take the exponential both side. So, you will get this probability. Pro this is the overall probability we are getting. Now, the, our chance is to find this what is this d. So, for this what we will do is we apply the normalization constant. Or normalization criteria that is we can write down that here summation of n goes from 0 to infinity and the probability of k okay so what is this normalization criteria it means when i vary first for any let's say n i start with 1 2 3 three number of molecules so in this three number of molecules what is the probability of a particular state to have an energy E k. So, that is nothing but P of E k like that. So, I will have to sum up all the probabilities of all the energies E 1, E 2, E 3 like that. Like that you keep on do a double summation. It means the double summation across any number of molecules 
corresponding to those each molecules number of molecules associated probability the double summation is unity so i'll do the same thing apply double summation on both sides of equation let's say i do a double summation on this expression that is let's say equation 5 let's say double summation on 5 so i will write here applying 6 on 5 so what do we get so what we get is summation so c will be then nothing but 1 upon summation n goes from 0 to infinity and then you have all the values of k e to the power of beta mu n minus beta ek okay this is the expression for c because this is one so if i do this this constant easy where e to the power of d i have written as equal to c okay this e to the power of d i have written as equal to c if i write here c so it means now in a position to demonstrate the partition function that is v b mu is nothing but 1 upon c which is equal to 1 upon c means you get the minus beta e k so this is your partition function for v beta mu or so i can write down what is the probability of a partition for a locating a certain state p k e k n is nothing but e to the power of minus beta e k into e to the power of beta mu n by this partition function okay or i can also write down here as so if i multiply this and then take a summation across all the number of molecules so it will be p of e k n i cross multiply these two is nothing but summation of n e to the power of minus beta e k this e k is a function of n v into e to the power of beta mu n ok so but what is this e to the power of minus beta e k n v this is nothing but q this is a partition function canonical partition function so it means this is nothing but the canonical function q which is a function of n v t and into e to the power of beta i can write down by k t so it is nothing but n mu by k t so this is the expression okay the overall expression is this q just remember q is nothing but canonical partition function so this canonical partition function is substituted here okay so this completes the probability expression now once we are getting the probability expression we can find out what are the thermodynamic properties so now you use the definition of entropy in our grand canonical ensemble using the definition of entropy using the definition of entropy that is the sum of the probabilities into their logarithmic values so we get s equal to minus k then you have the summation across all the n probability of e k to n ln of p e k into n okay now you have an expression for this probability but we from classical thermodynamics we also know this from classical thermodynamics 
I can write down entropy in terms of the internal energy by temperature minus plus of minus n of n bar by mu by t plus p bar v into t. So, these bar indicates these are average number of values. For example, if I want to find out the average number of particles for a grand canonical ensemble, this will be given by the partition function like this. nvt so it is nothing but kt into do ln of okay so n bar this is the expression for n bar n bar is you do nothing but what you do is you write out the summation term of the q into e term multiply with the number number of terms you want to write so this may n may be 1 2 3 4 5 6 so average number of terms based on the partition function is the thing you divide by this if you take the ln of that term of this partition function and then you take the derivative with respect to mu you will reach this expression kt into do ln d mu this is exactly the same as summation of n into q e into n mu by kt so this n bar is can be written as in this expression this is one of the term that is the average number of molecules let us do for the other terms also so we have got two terms here let me again uh, just reiterate what we got p of e k n e to the power of minus beta e k into e to the power of minus mu n by the partition function ok. This is the first expression we got earlier and uh, entropy also we have got s we know that is equal to s equal to minus k then the summation the probability of all the energy states into ln of probability of all the energy states okay so substitute this 5 expression let's say this is expression 5 and let us suppose this expression 7 substitute 5 in 7 substitute the value of this probability into this expressions and then simplify so if you do that you will get s equal to minus k into summation of all the numbers now when you do this you take the ln of this term first when you take the ln of this term first you will get is nothing but minus e k so beta i can take as 1 by kt so i write here 1 by kt so ln of e, t e term is minus beta e k that is e k by kt plus then n mu by kt okay minus of ln okay so this i'm taking since i've taken ln this side so this is minus of ln so now this is the term so i also have this term s as equal to e bar upon t from stat mech plus minus n bar mu by t plus p bar v into t okay this term if you compare these two terms that is equation this particular tick so i can simplify this term as let me first simplify this term s so minus k into if i operate on this this will be nothing but e bar upon t minus n bar mu upon t because here the k k cancels out so which is n bar because this probability when multiplied by this n it becomes n bar energy term when it is multiplied by the probability it becomes e bar like this here what you have is only the k term will be there because summation of this term into this is a constant summation of probability is equal to unity so it will be only be equal to plus k ln 
I have opened the bracket, multiply each with this term. So, this is E bar is E k into this probability, N bar is equal to N this part into the probability, okay. And this will be as it is, it becomes summation of probability is equal to unity minus k into minus L n equal to plus k. Now, compare this equation number 8 and equation 10. This 10 we obtain from classical thermodynamics. So, then uh, you see all the terms are equal. So, it means I can write down P bar only the third term P bar V equal to nothing but K L n this term or P V equal to K T L n of this term. See, this is an important conclusion. So, it means when I talk about uh, ideal gas law, it is PV KT, then it multiplied with the partition function Ln. So, we can also write down from classical thermodynamics D of P from classical thermodynamics So, this is from classical thermodynamics. So, do this both both of the expressions are from classical thermodynamics. So, dPV is equal to nothing but S dT plus N d mu plus P d V or D of P V, I can write down D of P V by dT keeping the value of V by mu is equal to S. So, if I take with respect to dT, if I take with respect to dt, this goes away. So, what you have is simply this expression d of pv, dpv by kt is simply equal to x. If I take v and mu, it will be constant. So, this term and this term it cancels out. So, it is only with respect to s I am having. So, if I take the product of pressure volume and do a derivative with respect to temperature, I will get the entropy or entropy s I can write down equal to d of now p v here I can write down from equation 9 p v is equal to k t l n partition function. So, it means this upon d t this is nothing but k t into dou plus k now this is the entropy. So, it means that I have replaced PV in place of PV, I have written KT ln this partition function, then I did the derivative. So, the derivative KT. So, if you know the partition function, microcanonical partition function, you take the derivative with the temperature and multiply by KT and multiply by K into a logarithm, you get entropy. So, this is an important conclusion which we have drawn with respect to the entropy. This you should remember. So, concluding what we got, you should remember these expressions, then we will move on to the further values. So, these are the expressions you should know V t mu, I can write down in terms of the n mu by k t, then the summation across energy states I for n molecules which is nothing but e to the power of minus e i n v by k t okay or I can write this is nothing but n of e n mu by k t into q n v t. Now, see how these are related. So, the relation between the macrocanonical partition function, sorry, grand canonical and the canonical partition is well known, okay. And uh, if you want to write some average properties, n bar, it is nothing but n of mu n by k t, then summation of the energy states I for n molecules. So, you just multiply by n, n into E i upon n v by k t, okay, by, by the partition function, 
vt mu. So, you can simplify this further. So, you can get n of e of n mu by kt, sorry, this minus sign will be there into n to q of n vt by this partition function. Okay, q n vt n. So, the internal energy can also be obtained in this manner E bar, which is nothing but again I write this term n mu by kt, then the summation across energy states I for n molecules equal to Ei. Now I am multiplying it by Ei, that is the energy at a any instant of time that is a any microstate energy into e to the power of minus e i by n v by k t divided by some the partition function v t mu. So, you see we have got two average properties n bar and internal energy. So, for n bar I am multiplying with n and for e bar I am multiplying with e i. So, here this is a way of obtaining the average property from a particular microstate property using the partition function. So, I will conclude here, please go through this book of Sandler. So, you will again go through these expressions, although these can canonical and canonical ensembles are given briefly, but you can always go through the derivation of the thermodynamic properties. Thank you. Mm -hmm.